Shaking his head, yes, okay. All right, well, we're glad you guys could be here tonight. Quick shout out, I don't know if he's even gonna wa if he's even watching, but I have a quick shout out to Pastor Felix. I've got his Timberline Kids shirt on. Yes, Pastor Brooke, if you're watching, I want one of your youth group shirts, so uh, send it my way. I will wear it when I preach, so um, she wore ours uh, last Sunday when she preached, so uh, that was cool. All right, well, we're glad you guys are here, and we are in Genesis 17. We're, we're moving now. All right. We're moving. Woo. All right, Father, I just thank you, God, for your word that, man, there is nothing in your word that isn't usable and for us. And so, Father, tonight as we dive into your word, I pray, Lord God, that you would open the eyes of our understanding, that we would see you in a new light. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, so if you guys missed a few weeks or you weren't here last week previously, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. You'll have to watch the youth group I do a previously on, and I cover, like, everything from, like, 16 chapters in 30 seconds, and it's like a wrap. And uh, I had one parent uh, say, there was something wrong with the video. You were talking so fast. And I was like, yeah, that was intentional, so I'm not doing that. All right, so previously uh, we saw that Abram and Sarai try to make the promise of God happen uh, because God's promise it had become nearly impossible. And so I mean, a lot of times we'll find that we do this in our lives. Like we try to make it happen. And God's been really dealing with me over the last year or so of don't make it happen. Just let me do it. And so I've just been trying to enjoy the moment with God and where he has me. And I have to be honest with you. I don't know anybody that has a young adult group this cool. So I'm like, <laughs> this is cool. I love it. I'm going to enjoy the moment. And so, um, but we saw them try to make it happen. While, the, while they still had time, they decided that Abram was going to have a kid with uh, Hagar. And so they tried to make this happen. So Abram has a son with Hagar. And for 13 years, the offspring becomes a thorn in their side. And the descendants of Ishmael uh, are still to this day a thorn in the side of Israel. But... We have something for them today, too. So, you know, sometimes we think that, oh, well, then God hates them. No, no, just wait. Wait till we get there. He does not. And so uh, we're going to be in Genesis 17. I'm going to start in verse 1. Here we go. Is everybody good? Good. Okay. Here we go. Genesis 17, 1. When Abram was 99 years old. Dude, that dude be old. The Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. So we've seen a few names of God so far. And uh, each time the name is different, but sort of similar. But it will, like, give you a new attribute or a new characteristic of God. And so as we begin to break down the Bible verse by verse, we are going to uncover all of the characteristics of God because we'll eventually we'll get to them all. And so a uh, quick recap. We saw... In Genesis 1, we saw Elohim, and so we, we never went through these exactly, and so that's why I'm going to go through them tonight. And so we saw Elohim in Genesis 1, which was the exceedingly great and mighty one, the supreme judge and creator of everything. And then we saw in Genesis 2, 4, Jehovah, and which meant the existing one, and it was used with Elohim. It was Jehovah Elohim. The existing one who is the great and mighty one. And so in Genesis 14, we, we saw the first uh, comparison or type and shadow of the enemy. We had had types and shadows of Jesus, but in chapter 14, we saw the first type and shadow of the enemy. And so what we saw was the king of Sodom came out and he said, hey, I'll give you all the riches. Just give me the souls. Remember, it was, the, it was the Hebrew word for souls, not people. And so we saw this kind of type of shadow. And then there was a, a priest, Melchizedek. I don't know. I said his name wrong like 50,000 times. I'm sure that's wrong too. And so he comes out and he says, I am the priest of the most high God. And he uses the name El Elyon, which is the highest, the most high, exalted above. He is above all other gods. And so the enemy says, hey, keep all the riches. And just give me the souls. And Abram is like, you know what? I want nothing to do with you because I serve the one who is greater than you. You will not be the one who makes me rich. You will not be the one who makes me famous. You will not be the one who provides for me because I serve the one who's greater than you. 
And so then last week, if you missed last week, I really challenge you to go back and watch it. We saw El Rohi, which was the God who sees you. And so tonight, God has a new, another attribute and another name of God, and it is El Shaddai. God Almighty, God is all-powerful, the God who is more than enough. You know, I think uh, it, it's fitting in, the, in a time when the world, everything is driven by fear to understand who we serve, that we serve the God of more than enough. And so Abram is 99 years old, and Sarai is 90, well past childbearing years. See, while there was still time, Abram and his wife said, hey, we're going to try to make this happen. So they have, a, they have a kid, they, they have Abram have a kid with the servant. We're going to make it happen. I don't know. I guess God's not going to deliver on his promise, so we're going to make it happen. And the result of what Abram could do with the time he had left was a thorn in his side. And so now he's 99 years old and has nothing left to give. And God says, now I'm going to show you how powerful I am. And so think about it. If Abram had kids with Sarai right after Hagar, you would have just said, well, they had kids in their later years. And God waited and waited and waited so that only he could get the credit for it. See, God says, I am Jehovah Elohim, the existing one who is great and mighty, the El Shaddai, the all-powerful God who is more than enough. And so in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, it says this. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power is works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. That is why I take pleasure in my weakness and in the insults and hardships and persecutions and punches in the face and in the troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. See, when you have nothing left to give, when you have nothing left to give, the El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one, never runs out. So no matter where you are with your relationship with God, the Jehovah Elohim, the El Shaddai, wants to show you how powerful he is. If you're someone here tonight, you've got a good relationship with God. Things are going great. Couldn't, been any, couldn't be any better. Guess what? God has more for you. He's not done. He wants to show you how great he can truly be. If you're someone here tonight and you said, you know what, it's been a while, you know, it's been a while, I, 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 I've been running away. Guess what? He wants to show you how great he can be. And so point number one tonight is he's still El Shaddai. We have this weird phrase in Christianity where we say we made Jesus Lord. Anyone heard of that? We made Jesus. Oh, yeah, they made Jesus Lord of their life. No, no, no. You didn't make Jesus anything. Jesus is Lord. You just accepted the truth is all. Jesus is Lord. You didn't make him anything. And so tonight I want to tell you whether you're in the place to receive it or not, that he still is El Shaddai. He's still all powerful. He's still the God who has more than enough to meet our needs. And so no matter where your relationship with, his God, with, with God is, he's got more for you. No matter how long it's been, He's the El Rohi, the God who sees you. He knows who you are. And so in Galatians 6, 9, it says, so let's not get uh, tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. You know, sometimes we think of harvest as like salvations. Anyone, like, that's, that's, is that what everybody went to? A harvest? Oh, salvations. No, this is a harvest of blessings, just so you know. Harvest of blessings. And so, you know, I, I think of it. Imagine having so many blessings come in that you needed farm equipment and help to bring it all in. Because he's the, he's the God of more than enough. 
Imagine, you know, um, blessings that are so much that friends and families, your family and your workplace is blessed because you are there and you were the one being blessed. I've seen this in my own life when I was in the, uh, the oil field one time. Um, uh, J- my friend Jason worked in the oil field and he, was, he got me the job and he said, whatever you do, just say yes to everything. We'll figure it out. Call me. I'll help you do your job. Just say yes. So at one time, I was doing three jobs at once because I wouldn't tell my boss no. And one of the jobs was 21 lines, like 21 pipes in the ground that I had to map out and shoot everything in while going a mile away, doing another one that had 18 lines, and then a weld connect somewhere else. And it was like, I was like, oh, my goodness, I don't know how I'm going to do all this. And I remember my boss called me and said, man, I said, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'm, I, I was uh, – I don't know why I said I was kind of a weirdo. I was like, well, I, I didn't do it for you. I said, I, I, everything I do, I do unto the Lord. And my, uh, my oil field boss goes, I don't care who you do it for, just keep doing it. <laughs> why? Because they were reaping the blessing of having me on their staff. They were blessed because they hired me. And I want you guys to begin to see God a- as the El Shaddai, the one that is more than enough for you. But when he's more than enough for you, it'll pour out into your workplace. It'll pour out into your school. It'll pour out into your home. If your home is a place that's really dark, a place that you don't want to be, I want to challenge you to, to dive into what God has for you. Because when you carry the presence of God, then all of a sudden darkness and light can't be in the same place. And your family will beg you to be home because when you're home, it's different. I saw this when I was uh, uh, moving furniture. Before I ever moved to, to Colorado, I was mo- I was. Uh, I uh, delivered furniture, which was ridiculous because I'm, like, the smallest guy ever and, uh, like, no muscles, like, okay. And I'm moving all this furniture. And uh, after two months, because I did everything unto the Lord, after two months, I was tra- retraining people that had been there for five years. I became, like, the number one guy. I would get given the hardest routes. I would get given all of this stuff. And I remember that the day I left, I'm not exaggerating my boss cried. When I moved to Colorado, he cried because he he was a part of the church I was at, and he knew that the blessing was about to leave. I'm telling you, when you're experiencing the blessings of God, it'll pour over into everything you do. And so... John 10.10 10 says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. See, God doesn't want you just to escape the enemy stealing. He doesn't want you just to escape the enemy trying to kill you. He doesn't want you just to escape the enemy trying to destroy you. He wants you to have life abundantly. He wants you to experience El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. And so, don't give up because it's about to get so good. Wh- what is your name? Yeah, Carrie. You're, you're the children's pastor in Decono, right? Don't give up. It's about to get so good. In fact, can we pray for you right now? Okay, let's, let's go ahead and stand up. Uh, Kaylee, where are you at? Come on over. We're going to pray. For Carrie, real quick. She's the children's pastor in Tacono. One of them. Okay, she's one of the children's workers in Tacono. And I want to challenge you because I was praying. I was praying for you before service, and and I, I want to tell you that he is the El Shaddai, but it's not you who makes it happen. It is him. And do all that you know to do. And when you have nothing left to give, he said wh- he'll say he says watch. Watch what I will do. Watch what I will do. So we're going to pray for you tonight. Is that okay? All right. Father, I just thank you for Carrie. Look, God, I thank you for the, that she is here for such a time as this. Father, I thank you, God, that you have her where, where you've placed her for this moment in time in the church she is at. Father, I thank you, God, for the future lives that will be forever changed because she's bringing children up in the way they should go. Father, right now I pray for any... any um, Any pushback 
Lord God, that you, where you, where you make a way, no man can close the door. So right now we silence the voices that, that want to tear down what you want to do. And right now we say in the name of Jesus, go forth, Carrie. Let the word of the Lord sound forth because it is you that has been chosen. It is you that has been chosen. So, Father, right now I pray that you would fill Carrie up to overflow. Fill her up to overflow. Lord God, that the fire would just burn within her. Burn within her. Lord God, that a river would flow from Carrie. Lord God, that that church would become alive. Lord God, that spiritual giants would begin to awaken in the name of Jesus. Lord God, that a river of living water would flow in that place. And it would start with the one who's willing to serve. It starts with the one who's willing to pray in the name of Jesus. So don't give up. Don't you quit. Don't you get tired or weary because it's about to get so good. Jesus, I just thank you so much that you have equipped Carrie with everything that she needs to fulfill the plan and the purpose that you have set before her, Jesus. I thank you that she is your child, Jesus, and she has a mission, Father, to reach the individual lives of each and every one of these kids that you have presented to her, Jesus. So I just pray that you would continue to fill her up, God, continue to um, sustain her, Father, and, and lead and guide her, God. Help her to become more and more in tune to your spirit, Jesus, and um, just put on her heart, God, whatever... Um, Whatever you would have, Jesus. I just thank you so much for her life, God. I thank you that you have her here for such a time as this, Jesus, that you are going to continue to um, bless her abundantly and those that she comes into contact with, Jesus. I just pray such favor over her, Jesus. I thank you for the anointing that is over her life, Jesus. And I just pray that you would bless everything that she puts her hands to, God, regarding that ministry, Jesus. I just thank you so much, God, for what you're already doing um, with those lives, Jesus. Please help the kids to have... Um, just hearts to receive, Jesus. In your name, Father, amen. I just feel like whatever God's given you so far is not what he's asking you to do the job with. He has more for you. He has more for you. Get ready. It's about to get so good. And I can't wait to hear from, from your family members of how good it's getting over there in Tacono. So we're so glad that you're here tonight. All right, let's get back to the word. Okay. Whew. Sorry, I was like, I will forget. I was like, well, I, I hit that point, and I was like, I'm, I need to pray for Carrie. And then I was like, I'll forget if I do at the end. I just know I will. So, all right, here we go. If you're watching online, I want to encourage you not to give up. It's about to get so good. All right. Sometimes you think, well, how good could it really get? I mean, things are pretty good, right? I mean, the, we're seeing, uh, I think, before this week, we saw we had like 41 salvations since January 1st. It was like 20. Some people got filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. Like, I mean, how, how much more does God have for us? I don't even know. And so on Tuesday night, uh, we had a, a, a guest speaker come, Pastor Jared Moss. And so if he's watching, what up? And so he, uh, he came and he preached. And we were, we were praying before service. And, uh, and, and, I, and I felt like God was, said, you know, um, tonight. I want you to give everything you have. I want you to leave this place with nothing left to give. And I believe my leaders did. They poured out on those students and prayed for those students. We had two salvations that night, but that's not even the coolest part. We had, which is cool, don't get me wrong. We had uh, 20, not exaggerating, 20, I counted their hands, 20 people raised their hands to give a testimony that God had physically healed them in that service. And one of them... One of them was me. <laughs> so, man, what could it get any better? I'm telling you right now, like, I, uh, w when we left, Pastor uh, Jared was praying for me, and he said, uh, um, he th he said that the healing is going to progressively grow. And so I've been believing God that, that God would restore a squashed disc in my back. And so for me, uh, my pain level was never lower than a three. And so it like after like long nights like Tuesday, it'll be and my feet get tired is when my back starts to hurt. And, and it's usually like an eight. And uh, on Tuesday night, it was like a one, which is really weird. And then but before service, Dylan was like, so how's your back doing? And I was like, oh, I hadn't even thought about it since Tuesday. See, 
I'm telling you, yeah. How good can it really get? Oh, it's getting better. Don't you worry. Get ready. It's about to get so good. He's still El Shaddai. And so let's see what else he'll do. <laughs> I'm like, yes, let's do it. All right. Qu uh, Genesis 17, 2 through 6. It says, I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. At this, Abram fell on his face fell face down on the ground, and then God said to him, this is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I'm changing your name. You know something big is about to happen when God says, I'm changing your name. It says, it will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham, for you will be the father of many nations. I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become Many nations and kings will be among them. It says, I'm changing your name from Abram. Abram meant exalted father. Exalted is to be lifted up, to think highly of, to speak highly of. You exalt somebody. And God says, your name has been Abram, exalted father, the one that I know, the plans I have for you. You're the one that I had said you will be the father of many nations. I have spoke highly of you. I have thought highly of you. I have spoke highly of you. But now I'm changing your name to Abraham. And Abraham is father of a multitude. See, I have thought the plans I have for you. I have spoken it over you. But now it's time for you to possess what I'm saying you will have. You will be a father who has a multitude. Philippians 4.19, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Number two, God wants to be El Shaddai in your life according to his power, not yours. His power, not yours. So if you're here tonight and you feel like, man, I've been trying and trying and trying and trying. Get to God who sees you. And he says, let me show you what I can do. And so you might say tonight, I have nothing left to give. Great. <laughs> now he can show you what he can do. Ephesians 3.20, now, now all glory to God who is able to, through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Whose power is it? Working where? So whose power is it? Working where? So whose power is it? Working where? In us. More than you can ask or think. I will throw this out tonight that if you can accomplish your dreams on your own gifts and talents, you did not dream big enough. Because that is your gifting that he gave you. What about what he wants to do through you? And so Genesis 17, verse 7, and I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. And I will give the entire land of Canaan where you now live as a foreigner to you and your descendants. It will be their possession forever. And I will be their God. And point number three is this. When God becomes El Shaddai, it is everlasting. He doesn't run out. He doesn't forget you. In fact, in Deuteronomy 31, it says, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord will personally go ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. And tonight, if you feel like you were alone, he hasn't abandoned you. And so he says, I want to. I don't just want to be Elohim, the great and mighty one in your life, but I want to be so for your children and your children's children. See, a lot of times we think of our relationship with God as us and God. And I want you to start to rethink what the way that you see that because 
uh, um, married people with kids in the room, listen to me right now. Your relationship with God will spill over to river. River's start, his start, where he will start in his relationship with God will be based on yours. Your relationship with God will spill over to Toby. It's not just you and him. Now, all of a sudden, you guys have a home. You have a home that all of a sudden, the blessings of God, if you will allow God to be everything he wants to be, it will spill over into your entire family. And Toby will grow up and knowing not just God or who he is, he will grow up knowing God's power as El Shaddai. And so... Here's one of your fill in the blanks. I think you will, I think it is, you will only experience God as much as you allow him to be. Some of you guys are from uh, uh, much more traditional backgrounds. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is real. He wants to be a part of your life. He wants to flow from you, and it's about to get so good. And so... What starting point are you giving your future kids? I'll put it this way, all the single people in the room. The garbage that you uh, have in your life is baggage that you will take into your future relationship. That ability to allow God to be El Shaddai in your life is something awesome that you will carry in to your future relationship. And so, if you remember God and Abraham, or a, yeah, Abraham had a covenant, and remember Abraham fell asleep and never actually got to walk through the, the sack of the dead animal, and God did all of it. He said, I'm taking full responsibility for this covenant. And so, in Genesis 17, 9, then God said to Abraham, your responsibility is to obey the terms of the covenant, and you and all your descendants will have continual responsibility okay so what th tonight we're going to look and see what that what now we're going to see abraham's side of the deal okay god said i'm going to take all of responsibility if it doesn't happen it's not because uh um that i there was some sort of break in the contract but he says hey what i want you to do to hold up your end of the deal is right here and it says verse 10 this is the covenant that you and your descendants must keep each male among you must be circumcised you must cut off the flesh of your foreskin as a sign of the covenant between me and you from generation to generation. Every male child must be circumcised on the eighth day after his birth. This applies not only to the members of your family, but also to the servants born in your household and the foreign born servants whom have you have purchased. All must be circumcised. Your bodies will bear the mark of the everlasting covenant. Any male who fails to be circumcised will be cut from the covenant family for breaking the covenant. So God says, this is what I want you to be set apart as mine. That's your end of the deal. And so we know when we get to the New Testament that it's not circumcision of the body, but it's circumcision of the heart. But we'll get there in a later time. But he says, I want you to be set apart as mine. I want your kids, I want your kids to be set apart as mine. He says, I, I, want, I want your family, your household, your workers, your business to be set apart as mine. And so this is why we didn't pray for Carrie at the end because we get weird here. All right. <laughs> now let's pray. <laughs> here we go. But Joshua 24, 15 says, but if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today. Choose right now whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods of your ancestors serve beyond the Euphrates, or will it be the gods of the Amorites in those lands you now live? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Have you set yourself apart from him? I'm going to tell you right now, as for me and my house, we serve the Lord. Elijah's too. I pray the same prayer over him every night because Elijah means Yahweh is my God. So I just pray, Father, I thank you that Yahweh is his God. And he's so funny. He like, he's like two, so he closes his eyes. He's like, Yahweh is my God. Like, what he does, it's so funny. He's so cute. But we pre-decided that my house serves the Lord. And so 
You know, he says, I want you to set yourself apart for him. Uh, side note, uh, there are some uh, um, circumcision has some physical benefits to it. Because, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, surprise me that if God says, hey, I want you to do something and it's be super weird, that it wouldn't have some sort of benefit attached to it, you know. And so uh, um, easier to keep hygiene, just so you guys know. That's one of them. Yeah. They're getting weird. Okay, we're all adults in here. Don't worry. Easier to keep hygiene. I, we actually know people who um, they had a, a middle schooler that, you know, because middle school boys are gross. We all know that. And uh, didn't keep good hygiene. And at like 13, had to be circumcised because it had gotten so bad. So hygiene is easier. Yeah, it, it's uh, yeah. All the girls were like, "What?" Um, decreased risk of sexual transmitted diseases. Um, men who have who've been circumcised have a lower risk of sexually sexually transmitted diseases, including HIV. Just want to throw that out there. Decreased risk of cancer, although um, cancer in that area for men is super rare. Uh, it is uh, less common in circumcised men. In addition, cervical cancer is less common in women when their sexual partner is circumcised. So, physical benefits. <laughs> now you know. I, I, went to, I went to the AMP and we talked about this. It's so weird. Now you know. Which is really odd, though. So when uh, it up until like ten years ago, this was like a normal thing for Americans, because you know, in England it wasn't, in America it was. And so uh, my sister's um, kids, she was like, "I don't know how to do all this." I'm like, "Yeah, I don't know, man. Like in America, we do we 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 do this." Well, now we we uh, um. It's really hard to find to, to to like I don't know if you found it too. It was really hard to find find that when you have a kid to get that done because they're pushing anything that is related to God out. All science goes out the window. We're just pushing it out. And I remember I was in the um the the class that you take to be a parent. I don't know. You have to take a class now apparently. And so uh this is where when Noah was about to be born. And I remember there was like 15 couples in this room, like a lot of us in this room. And this nurse is pushing how horrible circumcision is. And I look around the room, and the entire room is doing this. But that's what they're pushing. And so there's benefits to it. But that's not what the, this is. doesn't surprise me that there's medical benefits. But if you look in verse 11, it says, you must cut off the flesh from your foreskin as a sign of the covenant between me and you. It's a physical sign that Abraham and his household belong to the Lord. In Acts 16, let's take a look at this real quick. Acts 16, verse 1, Paul went first to Derby and then to Lystra, where there was a young disciple named Timothy. His mother was a Jewish believer, but his father was a Greek. Timothy was well thought of by the believers in Lystra and Iconium. So Paul went, uh, wanted him to join them on their journey Indifferent to the Jews of the area, he arranged for Timothy to be circumcised before they left, for everyone knew that his father was Greek. Now, like, what the heck? So, Paul, everywhere he went on his mission trips, he went to the synagogue first. And if Timothy was to have full access to everywhere in the synagogue, he would have to have had this done. What are you talking about? Dad, I got a job at the temple I'm so proud of you, son. What is your job? I'm the wiener checker. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. He shouldn't belong here. Oh, yes, I do. And so then it also says, because everyone knew, hey, he shouldn't be there. He doesn't belong here. Oh, yes, I do. You know, like it's the weirdest story ever. I'm just, I'm just reading the story. The physical outward mark that they belong to God. Anyway, let's move on. We just got full weird. Everyone's going to be looking up later. Wiener checker. Don't look that up. <laughs> Do not look that up. Bad time. Bad time. All right. Verse 15. Then God said to Abraham regarding Sarah, your wife, her name will no longer be Sarah. For now, on, uh, from now on, her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and give her a son 
from give you a son from her. Yes, I will bless her richly, and she will become the mother of many nations. Kings and nations will be among her descendants. Real quick, so Sarai meant princess, and so you know I'm from uh, from I, I originally lived in England, and in England they have a lot of royalty and stuff. And just because you're a prince or a princess doesn't mean you'll ever be king. You're in line for it, but uh, who knows? And up until this time, God has said, hey, you're going to be the father of many nations. Well, I'm in line for it, but uh, it's not looking like it's going to happen. Who knows? And he says, I'm going to change your name to Sarah, which means noble woman. And nobility is this quality that, that is, uh, is given to you from birth. It's not something that, that uh, you get later in life. You are born into nobility. So if you watch a lot of like medieval like shows that like there's like the noble people, like they're like the high society, whatever, like you are born into that. And he says, hey, Sarai, you were someone that, well, might not happen, it may happen, I don't know. No, now I'm going to move you into the place where you, this is who you are, and this nobility is something that you hand down to your kids. All of a sudden, she became in a place where she was beginning to possess what God had promised her. And so, the time for waiting is over. It's time to step into your nobility. Verse 17, then Abraham bowed down to the ground, but he laughed to himself in disbelief. How can I become the father at the age of 100, he thought. And how can Sarah have a baby when she's 90 years old? So Abraham said to God, may Ishmael live under your special blessing. Abraham can't see, see it. He can't, he can't see it happening. He's kind of lost his hope. And God replied, no, Sarah, your wife will give birth to a son for you. And you will name him Isaac. Just so you guys know, future kids, Isaac is a great name. And so um, you, you will call him Isaac, and I will confirm my covenant with him and his descendants as everlasting covenant. As for Ishmael, I will bless him also. Just as you, as you have asked, and I will make him extremely fruitful and multiply and his descendant. He will become the father of 12 princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will be confirmed with Isaac, who will be born to you and Sarah about this time next year. So the, the uh, Arab nations that are uh, around Israel today come from the line of Ishmael. And God says, I, I will bless them too. I want to tell you guys something for a second that, um, you know, the, the, the uh, Islamic nations out there, they still need to accept Jesus. But God loves them, too. And I want to tell you guys that, you know, it, we haven't, haven't seen it so much lately because um, we have fear of something else now. There's always got to be fear for something. But I want to tell you that the Islamic nations are not the enemy. The enemy is the one who is lying to them. That's the enemy. And so God says, I'll bless them, too, because you asked for it. And so, verse 22, then God, when God had finished speaking, he left Abraham. And on that very day, Abraham took his son, Ishmael, and, the, and every male in his household, including those born, and they're born there and those who had been bought, and he circumcised them, cutting off the foreskins, just as God had told them. Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised, and Ishmael, his son, was 13. He, he, he dedicated Ishmael to God, too. And so both Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised on that same day, along with all the other men and boys in the household, whether they were born there or bought as servants, all were circumcised with him. All held the mark that they had a covenant with El Shaddai. But as for me and my house, I serve the Lord. Tonight, I want to ask you if you're still holding back. Is there stuff you're holding on to because you need to be the one who makes it happen? So tonight, as you close your eyes in this place, but I, I just want to ask you, tonight, will you give him everything? As for me and my house, as for me and my life, 
That's for me and my job. That's for me and my company. That's for me and my school. We will serve the Lord. We will hold the mark of El Shaddai. Father, tonight I just pray for everybody in the room. That we'd begin to see you more clearly as the God Almighty. As the God who more than enough. Lydia, if you'll come up and play for me real quick. So, Father, I just thank you for what you're doing in this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. If we'll go offline, that'd be great. All right. Uh, Dave, go ahead and stand.